नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर अंकित पारक एंड आई वर्क एज अ कंसल्टेंट इन पीडियाट्रिक पल्मोनोलॉजी एलर्जी एंड स्लीप मेडिसिन एट चिल्ड्रंस चेस्ट क्लिनिक न्यू डेली सो इन दिस वीडियो वी टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी कॉमन प्रॉब्लम व्हिच आर चिल्ड्रन फेस व्हिच इज नोन एज एडेनोइड हाइपरट्रोफी और इंक्रीज इन द साइज ऑफ एन एडेनोइड सो लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड what is an adenoid so adenoid and tonsils they are basically lymph nodes which are present in all children so as we know tonsils can be seen in the in the throat of the child so if the, if, if the child opens the mouth wide you will be seeing two small lumps on the side of the throat now these are tonsils now adenoids are similar to tonsils but because they are present at the back of the nose we cannot see the adenoids from the mouth or through the nose now usually the adenoids are small in size and they usually do not trouble the child rather the tonsils and adenoids protect the child and they are part of the immune system of the child now in some children the adenoids or the tonsils or both they can increase in size and create a bit of trouble now the adenoids are present at the back of the throat and if the adenoids are increased in size they can lead to a lot of problems now as we understand that if the adenoids are large in size the child will not be able to breathe through the nose and the child will constantly breathe through the mouth and that will lead to a persistently blocked nose a runny nose and and breathing through the mouth and mouth opening so the child will keep the mouth like this now due to this uh, the, the facial structures can change the child can have a high arched palate the upper lip can be hitched up there can be problems with dentition uh, and there can be malocclusion of the teeth now in addition to this because the nose is constantly blocked the speech of the child uh, becomes a bit delayed and the consonants of speech which are produced through the nose will be dampened so the child will have more of a nasal speech and and there will be a lot of speech delay which happens now in addition to this as we know that the adenoid is present at the back of the nose and it can it can uh, you know obstruct something which is known as a eustachian tube which connects the ears from the nose now when this tube gets blocked because of adenoids the ears can get frequent infections or otitis and sometimes there can be a sticky fluid inside the ears and this condition is called as glue ear or serous otitis media which can lead to hearing loss in a child the last condition which which uh, can get uh, worsen because of adenoid is something known as sleep apnea so children with large adenoids can develop sleep apnea now in this situation the child will be having a lot of snoring during the night and because the airway get obstructed frequently at night the children will have difficulty in breathing they can have pauses during breathing so it will be something like this so these are pauses during breathing which can be seen and some children may also observe apneas or they will find that the child in between in between these snoring episodes will stop breathing now this is a condition which is described as sleep apnea in children so if any child is having symptoms of adenoid hypertrophy what is to be done so the child should, needs to be evaluated the, there are some investigations which would help a lateral x-ray neck is usually done to to look at the size of the adenoids in addition a good ear examination is required to assess whether the child is having a serous otitis media or not uh, in addition we would look at the face of the child to understand that the child is not developing any of the features which we have just described in the video now if the child has any of the facial features or 
the child have problems of ears or hearing loss in such situations the adenoids and the tonsils need to be removed which is called as an adenotonsillectomy there would be a lot of children who would be having adenoid hypertrophy but they do not have ear problems and they do not have facial problems now in such situations we need to understand that children would be snoring and they can have sleep apnea now in such situations to look at or to evaluate sleep apnea children require something known as a sleep study which is done in a sleep lab so the sleep study will be able to tell us whether the child has an associated sleep apnea or not and if the child has sleep apnea then again the child will require an adenotonsillectomy so if your child is having any symptoms associated with an enlarged adenoid do consult your pulmonologist or allergist and get your child evaluated so for more information you can log on to our website antikparan.com